Today's video is a continuation of my conversation with David Lieberman. We are talking about senior placement, senior relocation, and everything that has to do with that. on the ground in the Miami Fort Lauderdale area and on this channel we talk about probate, guardianship, senior relocation and everything in between. This is a continuation of the first video that we did with David Lieberman and this time we're going to get more into the the emotions of it all. Which makes sense. There's the need but it's how you understand the need, how you react to the need. Um, I guess I'll start off personally. I kind of went through a four-year process with my parents toward the end of their lives. Um, they both had dementia, one through Parkinson's, and I remember thinking about it later on, what was the kind of trigger for me who has a background in this field? And my trigger was when my mother said, I'm having trouble doing the bills. And then my brother said to me, who was really hands-on as well, he said, for him, it was when she had a couple of falls. So he remembers a couple of falls. I, my trigger was that she was starting to say, I can't do a basic thing anymore that I used to do. And that's again, kind of professionals in this world. So now you talk about families that aren't thinking about this, that don't work in this field, that don't work with seniors all the time. How do they respond to this? And the emotions are overwhelming. Um, even when families kind of think they have it in control or clients do, here's what they're worried about. There, there's a general fear. There's this fear of their mortality. There's the, the change that di of dynamic that might be going on between parent and child. How does a child sometimes become the parent? Um, how do you know when it's the right time to, to make that move? And so all those things kind of coalesce into a family dynamic that kind of says, you know, we think we know what we're doing, but we don't know what we're doing. And I deal with that all the time and it's tough on them. So what they need is kind of, they need a calming influence. They need someone who understands all this, someone who's happy to listen to them, and someone who's happy to guide them through this. Um, and sometimes someone who's got to give them that extra push. Because, you know, when you say, I know what's right, but what do I do next? Sometimes they need someone to say, I think it's time. Let me, let's sit down and talk, and let's help you to get over your hesitations. I think those are all really good points. I find that all of those things are true, and also, how do you have the conversation about perhaps you shouldn't be driving anymore, or perhaps you shouldn't be driving at night anymore, or, you know, perhaps, as you said, the child winds up, the adult child winds up taking more of the, the parenting type of role. It, it's really challenging. And then talking about money, right? I find that there's so much fear. What's it going to cost? How are we going to pay for this? Can we pay for this? Perhaps the parents haven't really shared a lot with the children throughout their lives about their finances, and they're hesitant to open up about their, their finances. It's something they've never done before, and now it's becoming necessary. Yeah, now you throw all this in a pot and you have a soup of emotions and with physical changes, cognitive changes, uh, family dynamics, it's tough. There is an answer, but I can guarantee that for most people it isn't a simple one because they do really need to take the time to work through this. Um, and if it were me, and I, this is not something, I'm just I'm gonna give you a flair for the obvious comment. If I had a free resource like you when it comes to making you know, decisions like this as you're aging, or like our company when it comes to making decisions like this when you're aging, and there's no cost to our time, and you could just have conversation with us on phone, Zoom or in person, I'd be calling. Uh, it takes time, it takes work. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, we're not even talking about, you know, the traditional family. We also, like my family, my father, he's a has second marriage of over 40 years. I have my sister and my stepbrother. We're very fortunate that we're all on the same page. We all have the same vision. We're working collaboratively to make decisions. But as you know, that's not always the case. Sometimes you have one sibling that has one set of ideas, someone else that has another set of ideas, and being able to work within all of those personalities can be really challenging as well. Absolutely right. 
I find that that leads to more of these conversations. Um, the families that are trying to uh, put it all together, even if it's tough, there are Zoom calls. Uh, there are face-to-face -face conversations. There are multiple family meetings. And yeah, and that's kind of the lucky situation. We have clients that are on their own. Um, or we have clients that were contacted, you know, from a guardian, let's say, because they're at that point where they're not even controlling their own destinies anymore. Yeah, and I don't mean to sound uh, like it's a negative situation, but there is a reality to this that um, that when you reach a certain point in your life and you need that extra help, um, that it, it's a tough thing to, to kind of figure out. So, well, that's what people like us are here for. You know, I, I know a lot of folks, their parents may be still in their, in their 60s. It's not quite time to have perhaps a conversation about where they're going to live. But in terms of having conversations about finances, about healthcare surrogate, power of attorney, it doesn't have to be end of life. It could be that someone got in a car accident and that they need someone to write checks on their behalf for a period of time. So if someone hasn't had those conversation with their parents and now those things are starting to come to mind, do you have any tips or suggestions on how people can broach those conversations? Yeah, I mean, I might say this is, especially if you're talking about just be coming into your 60s and 70s, whether it's 10 years away, 15, whatever happens to me. Again, this is outside of our scope, but probably, you know, you know, working with an estate planning attorney or an elder law attorney is probably the first place that the average person starts to get some grasp of what's going on as they're aging or as their parents are aging. And it's more proactive. It talks about planning. It talks about trust. It talks about what some of your costs might need to be. So if I were to look outside of us, you know, and, and go, you know, again, five to 10 years thinking ahead, I'd say probably it's with two types of uh, professionals. It would be uh, elder law attorneys, estate planning attorneys, and maybe financial advisors if you have them. They're helping you to think for the long term. And I've had those conversations where financial planning, well, you want to consider what happens because you might spend more money after you're 85 for the next five years than you would between 75 and 85 for 10 because of those higher needs. So, you know, it's just a thought. I think those are really good suggestions because those are the two professionals proactively. I think it's never too early to talk to an elder law and estate planning no. attorney because you an estate plan is something that is not fixed in time. It changes throughout your life. Perhaps when you did your estate plan, you didn't have grandchildren yet and you want to set up a college fund for them. And, True. You know, life situations change. People get married, people get divorced, people are born, people die. And then the financial plan, it just, as you said, typically we think of our expenses going down in retirement, but if someone needs someone to come in and do home health care or they need to move to an adult living facility, their expenses can actually increase. So work They go down and then they go way up. Exactly. Or can, as long as you're aging in a home or, as long, or if you're considering a community like this, they do. Yeah, absolutely. And aging in home, you know, people can think that that's less expensive, but they may need to do adaptive things to make bathrooms handicap accessible, bring in a home health care provider, bring in a live-in. So having those conversations, I don't think it's ever too early no. for them to have those conversations with, like you said, not people like the two of us, but the attorney and the financial planner, those conversations. And it can help you manage those emotions. If you're thinking about it at 65 and you kind of have some prep and then maybe you involve your kids at some point, that can, that can better navigate those emotions. Yeah. Uh, and those professionals may also have good suggestions as to when to pull the children into those conversations so that it's not one conversation when something hits the fan and it's an emergency, but it's a conversation through the aging process so that, you know, it's more of a, it's more of a planning and discovery over time than we've had a real crisis and we need to involve our adult children today. I would kind of say this. We know what human nature is. You're absolutely right, um, but most people just aren't gonna be ready. So you wanna have the right answers for them when they call. So this is something I know that I'm very passionate about and you're very passionate absolutely. about. Absolutely. We'll have many more discussions throughout time. We're gonna wrap it up for today. We're gonna enjoy, we're actually at this beautiful park at TY Park in Hollywood, Florida. 
and we're really fortunate. It's a little bit overcast with a light breeze in uh, the beginning of March, so I hope the, nor the northerners are not gonna hate on us. But uh, we're gonna continue to have the conversation. And if you watch this and you have any questions or comments, we'd like you to like or subscribe. Like and subscribe below. Put any comments, questions, or suggestions for future episodes in the comments. I do take the time to read them all. We'll have David's information there for you. And please don't be a stranger. We look forward to connecting.